Hey everybody, how you doing today? My name is Eric and we are back at it again with another test for Cavern. If you're not familiar with what Cavern is, Cavern is a prototype chamber that's designed to dry cure meats, age cheeses, and potentially dry age beef. This is made by a company called First Build. These are the same guys that brought us the Opal Nugget Ice Maker and they've asked me to put their chamber through the ringer, and that's exactly what we've been doing. And if you've been keeping up with this series, you'll know that in the last episode, Cavern had an epic failure. We had 10 pounds of meat, different charcuterie projects, the humidity spiked, and Cavern did not have a way to control the dehumidification within the chamber. All the meat that we put in there would have spoiled, so to keep that from happening, we took the meat out and put it in our primary chamber. Now, most of you out there thought, that the testing was over, but in today's video, I'm gonna show you what I did to keep the testing going because I still got questions. I need to know about airflow. I need to know how the humidification fans will affect the charcuterie, and uh, over the next series of tests, hopefully we'll get those answered. All right, now before we begin, I just wanna say that if you wanna get official updates from First Build, on Cavern. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description box below. Just click on it, sign up for the updates, and First Bill will notify you as this project is moving along. More importantly, though, you'll be notified first before anybody else when Cavern becomes available. And uh, trust me when I tell you it's going to be amazing if we can work out some of the little details. Let's get started. All right, so in order to modify Cavern, we're going to need to take control of basically everything. The first controller we're going to use to do that is a temperature controller. And I'm going to plug that wine fridge into the cooling port of this controller. That's going to control the temperature. Uh, pretty easy. This next one is going to control the humidity. And so I'm going to plug their humidification system into work one. And we're going to plug our very own dehumidification system into work two. And that's going to look a little like this. We're just going to be using a small Peltier technology you know, Evadry dehumidifier, and that should keep everything in balance. All right, so let's go ahead and take this to Cavern and get it set up. All right, so here we go. First thing we got to do is lower the temperature of this wine fridge. We're going to bring it all the way down to the lowest setting, and that's going to ensure that it always cuts on when our temperature controller tells it to cut on. And remember in the last video, we removed several of the filters. You know, we were trying to determine whether we could control humidity like that, and that didn't work. So we're going to put those filters back into their appropriate location. And um, I kind of like this basin with the filters set up. You know, I think it could use a little bit of work, but in a month of testing so far, I mean, it's barely used up any water. So let's go ahead and now put in the sensors. These are the sensors for the temperature controller and the humidity. This one is for temperature. And this one is for humidity. We're just going to place that right in the center of this box. And then now we're going to add our dehumidifier. All right. So we're going to place this right on the back area. Not going to be a problem. This spot seems like it's the most out of the way. We can hang the long salami on the right. Right here above it, we can hang, you know, our tenderloin, our duck. It's not going to be an issue. And then we're just going to run the wires through the door. Uh, there were already wires running through the door, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. And, you know, it did create a little bitty tiny gap but nothing bigger than what was there before. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. We're probably still going to be able to maintain our parameters uh, pretty good. All right, so this is what the controllers look like. We've got our temperature controller. As you can see here, we're going to set it now to the appropriate 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down. Very easy controller to use. This is by Inkbird. And we're going to do the difference. That's the heating difference at 2 degrees. And we're going to do the cooling difference at 2 degrees. So that means if it gets to 57 or if it gets to 53, uh, you know, the controller will react. The alarm setting, uh, we're going to set a three-minute timer so that the compressor doesn't go out. doesn't need to be calibrated. We want it in Fahrenheit. And there we go. So the current temperature is 67 inside the chamber, and we want it to be 55. And now the controller is doing the work. That green light is letting me know that the refrigerator is now running. And it's going to run until it gets to the appropriate temperature, at which point it'll cut off and, you know, try to maintain that 55 degree mark. As far as humidity goes, controller basically works the exact same way. We're going to go ahead and set it to 80%. That's kind of like where I like to keep my humidity when I'm doing dry cured meats. And um, that HS on this controller stands for humidity setting. And so there we go. We just set it to 80. Let's go through the... Uh, 
the different values. HD is humidity differential, and so we're going to set that to 4. So that means uh, it's going to cut the humidity on when it gets down to 76. And the DD is the dehumidification differential, and that means it's going to cut the dehumidifier on when the uh, humidity gets to 84. So we're setting a 4 point difference. The alarm is set to 99. The low alarm is set to zero. And we don't need the PT. We don't need it. And see so here calibrated because it's calibrated. And let's go ahead and get it back to operation mode. And there it is. So the current humidity in the chamber is 62.7. It's set to 80. And that red light is indicating that the humidifier is on. So it's going to increase the humidity until it gets to the set value, at which point it turns the humidifier off. All right, so here we go. These are our two controllers. Both of these controllers are necessary when you're building your own chamber. This one controls temperature. Remember, this one controls humidity. We now have 100% control of cavern. And we've got one more thing to do before we load this chamber down with meat. I want to put in a thermohygrometer. That's a really fancy word for this very inexpensive tool that's absolutely priceless. This is going to monitor the temperature and the humidity. It's just going to kind of give us some readings. I do want to make sure my humidifier is turned on, and we are good to go. So I'm going to let this run for about 12 hours, let all the changes that we made, you know, take effect, and then we're going to load this thing down with meat. And I'm going to show you what the results are of that thermohygrometer so that we could kind of take a look at what's going on in the chamber. So 12 hours have passed and we're going to take some of the meat from my primary chamber and put it into cavern. What I want to do is leave a portion of the meat in this chamber so that I can compare it to how the cavern dry cures meat. I mean, we know that my chamber is dialed in, no doubt about it. And so we get to kind of compare between the two chambers. And so this is what we're going to be loading Cavern down with. It ends up being about 10 pounds. And realistically, if I wanted to load this chamber down, you know, with that dehumidifier back there, I could probably put another five or six pounds in there. But 10 pounds is sufficient for now. We're going to let that do its thing and see what happens. Uh, let's go ahead and take a peek at the thermohygrometer after 24 hours so that you can see the results. All right, so temperature looks stable. You've got your highs and lows. That's when the compressor kicks on and off. But notice that line right in the middle. That's your average. And it looks like we're averaging around 55.5 degrees, roughly. And humidity, same thing. You know, when the compressor kicks on, the humidity is going to plummet and then it's going to slowly rise. But it looks like we're averaging, which is what's important, about a 79.8% humidity with a four point difference, high and low. And I'm going to tell you, it just doesn't get any better than that. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. All right, so now we wait for our first project to get done. And if you need one of these thermohygrometers, check out the link in the description box below. This is the cheapest piece of equipment you could buy that'll actually help you make better charcuterie. All right, everything's running smoothly. Temperature and humidity look great. We're now going to wait 12 days until our first project is done, and that is our Genoa Salamini. Now, I've got a recipe link in the description box below on how to make Genoa Salami. Just you know, change the cure to cure number one and put it in hog casings and you're going to have salami fermented meat sticks in, you know, less than two weeks. So let's go ahead and remove the salamini from cavern. And right off the bat, I could tell you, you know, interesting difference between the mold growth between mine and uh, the one from cavern. Uh, now they were both put in there for the exact same amount of time. They were both wiped down with Penicillium naugeovensi, but the one in my chamber has a more uniform coating of that white mold. But nonetheless, not a big deal. Um, I think it may have something to do with airflow, but we'll see later. Uh, let's go ahead and just cut the tips off. You know, the tip of a salami is always very telling. Look at this one. This is from Cavern. All right, very nice. Very evenly dried. And let's go ahead and cut the tip off of mine. Okay, looks exactly the same. I love that marbling. Wow, that's that's awesome. <laughs> That's like mostly fat. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see how we're going to do this. We're going to cut a piece off the bottom and we're going to cut a piece off the middle and then we're going to cut a piece off the top. And I just want to see at the different areas uh, how they dried. Um, my biggest concern right now, and this is why we're continuing this test, is I want to see how airflow is affecting the salami inside cavern. I know that if you can control humidity and you can control temperature, then 90% uh, of the work is already there. But airflow is always a tricky issue. 
you really don't want a lot of airflow. And I know that it seems like we basically made a DIY uh, charcuterie chamber, you know, in 30 seconds. Uh, but the reality of it is it's a little more complicated than that because if you can't control airflow or if you have too much airflow, then your salami is not going to uh, dry properly. It's not, it's going to basically dry too fast. All right, so let's take a look at the slices. That's the top. This is the middle section. Looks nice. No dry ring. Uh, look at the bottom section right here. Okay. Now, granted, I must admit, salamini is not the best test, but on this test, doesn't look too bad. Let's taste it. All right, here we go. The first piece of meat to come out of Cavern. This is a Genoa salamini, small diameter, sheep casing, incredibly forgiving uh, salami to make, I must admit. So we did take it easy on Cavern, at least for round number one, but as the rest of the projects start to dry, we're really gonna be able to see Cavern's true colors. Uh, I do really think that the modifications that we made uh, were a great improvement. The uh, chamber is humming at 55 degrees Fahrenheit and roughly 79, 80% humidity, which is absolutely perfect. And as I look at both samples, you know, with the exception of the mold growth that uh, happened on the exterior of the salaminis, and that can be any number of reasons, uh, the meat itself actually dried exactly the same. I mean, they look identical. All right, so let's just go ahead and give it a little taste and see if there's any flavor difference between the two. Now, in case you're wondering, the casing is completely edible. Sheep is generally a lot more tender than pork or beef, and the mold is completely edible, and that's gonna add its own unique flavor to the salamini. So let's start with mine. This was dry cured in our dry curing chamber. Here we go. Hmm. That's tasty. A salamini is uh, generally a very young salami, and so it's not gonna have quite the depth of flavor that, let's say, a 60 or 70 millimeter salami has, but great texture, the spices are definitely on point, nice firm bite to it. Overall flavor is exactly what it needs to be for a salami that only took, you know, 12 days to make. So let's go ahead and try the salamini from Cavern. They both taste exactly the same. You know, if you had a blindfold on, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference. They had the same bite, the same chew, the same tenderness, and even though one clearly had more mold growth on it, uh, the flavor seemed identical. They both had a very pleasant, mushroomy, slightly earthy flavor with a Genoa spice blend. And uh, I consider this a success for Cavern and a clear indication on how important it is to be able to properly manage humidification and dehumidification as well as temperature. So moving in the right direction. Thanks for watching this video. If you got any questions, leave them in the comment section. And if you like this video, a great big thumbs up. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.